So the technologies learning area is divided into two subjects, design and technology and digital technologies. Now in the curriculum documents, you will see an overarching rationale and set of standards and framework for the learning area as a whole. It's important to read that, but it then goes down and divides it into two subject areas, design and technology and digital technologies. So looking first at design and technology, you'll come across a onion diagram where we have various levels. And you'll see that in the center of the onion diagram, there is creating solutions. The focus of our teaching of technologies education is students creating solutions to problems or opportunities. So it's all about students doing something, creating solutions. That is the focus of both subjects and the technologies learning area as a whole. So how do we go about doing that? Well, there are the two subjects, design technology and digital technologies. And each of these have three thinking skills. Now, a thinking skill is a way of viewing the world. So it's a way of thinking about solving problems, but solving it with a particular understanding of the world. We have scientific thinking, we have mathematical thinking. There's a whole range of different thinking skills. The three that are going to be focused on in this course are computational thinking, design thinking, and systems thinking. Now, systems thinking is understanding the world as a whole series of interconnected systems. So nothing actually sort of is just simple cause and effect. It's all interrelated with lots of other complex systems. So for example, um, making, a, making a meal has a system of food preparation. But prior to that, there was a system where you actually purchased that food. There was a whole retailing system. Behind that, there was a whole transportation system of getting food from farms and factories to the supermarkets. On a farm, there's a whole series of complex systems related to the production and growth of food. So all of these systems interact with one another. And understanding that the world is made up of complex systems and seeing that world in that way is what systems thinking is about. Similarly, we have computational thinking, which is seeing the world from a perspective of understanding how technology works. And we'll talk about that in the next section. But in particular for design and technology education, we have design thinking, which is seeing the world from the perspective of a designer. So you may have experienced this on some of the TV shows that you may watch, where it's all about designing a house or it's all designing interior design and laying out furniture and um, wallpaper and paint and all of the rest. And those that have a really in-depth understanding of design, all the different concepts related to design, lighting and mood and flow and all of the rest, can see the world from the perspective of a designer. And when they have to solve a problem, such as well, where to put a couch in a new lounge room, they can see the world differently to someone that hasn't had that experience with design processes and coming up with a whole range of different creative solutions, seeing which one is the most effective solution, balancing that with various needs and opportunities that exist around the options to do with putting a couch into a lounge room. So someone that has an understanding of design can be more effective in solving that problem than someone that doesn't. So it's a way of seeing the world. Yes, it involves a whole lot of practical processes that we can teach and students will learn, but it's their way of thinking about and seeing the world that frames it as a thinking skill. So they're the three thinking skills that are going to be developed in technologies education. Now, there are three other aspects that are also part of the learning. One is around enterprise and entrepreneurship where we teach students to be entrepreneurial and to try to come up with creative, new, innovative ways of doing things. 
that's one aspect that we'll be exploring. Another is around project management, where students learn how to manage their time and their resources and work in teams and collaborate and be successful in solving their problems through a whole range of different skills to do with management and business processes, essentially. And then we have technologies, processes and production. And these are a whole range of skills around making things and about creating web pages or programming or uh, using a hammer, using a glue gun, a whole range of different practical processes. The next layer of our onion is three main sort of conceptual aspects that we have a focus on in terms of what students are learning. One is around data, and a lot of this relates to our digital technology subject, but an understanding of data and how a lot of the things we do in the world have a relationship to data, collecting data, using data, manipulating data, sharing data. The world can be seen from a perspective of data. And that's one aspect that we will explore. Another aspect is around systems, but not so much systems thinking, but the fact that the, we have a whole range of complex systems that we utilize, utilize all the time, such as a computer system or a system of manufacturing something, such as in a bakery and making a whole series of cakes. There's a, comp, there's a systematic way of doing things there. And then finally, there's interactions and impact where students need to learn that what they create in terms of their solutions can be impactful. They can make a difference to people. They might make a difference to the world. But that difference doesn't always necessarily have to be positive. Sometimes it may be negative. And students need to learn about the consequences of some of their decisions around the use of resources and other aspects that their solutions might have harm. And taking responsibility and balancing that towards benefits and so forth. And the final layer of our onion is around creating preferred futures. So while the core aspect is around solving problems, the overarching purpose of that is to make the world a better place, to create the world as we want to see it. Now that's a really fundamental concept. The fact that students can make the world as they want it to be, rather than simply accepting the world as it is and having an impact upon them. So a big part of technology's education is instilling in students the mindset that they are capable of changing the world for the better by solving problems, creating solutions to these problems, and going through these various processes that they'll be learning about, and you'll be learning about how to teach them. So where are you going to find all of this detail about what to teach them? Well, that's in the curriculum documents. So you need to go to the um, Australian Curriculum website, and you need to unpack and explore these documents in detail. Now, I'm not going to go through in line by line detail and unpack them. I've done that before, and the students, it's just too much detail. It's just too much to, for me to unpack it for you. You can read it and identify the various sections that are important for you at any particular time. And there'll be various activities that you're going to be doing throughout this course where you will need to unpack these documents. Quite a lot of them, in fact. Two of the first activities you're going to be doing for your log of learning are some quizzes where you unpack these curriculum documents and answer various questions about them. Now, I don't want you just to answer the questions, though. Read the documents. Now, I don't expect you to memorize them and to read every word and to know them back to front. That's not the purpose of reading them. Reading them is to become familiar with what's in there so that when you need to go and find something, you know generally where it is, which of the aspects of the document that you need to go and find it, or the website as it's framed in the Australian curriculum, and you can go and readily access that so that you can make your lessons more effective. That is the purpose of the curriculum documents. They're there as a guide to assist you in your lessons and in your teaching of your students. And you'll use it in making assessment tasks and in framing learning activities for your students to work through. And you'll demonstrate that at the end of the course through your lesson videos. So 
some of the aspects of design and technologies. One element is looking at how technology impacts upon society, how we've always had technology. Technology has existed from the first time human beings picked up a stick and whacked it together to make something or to, to hunt an animal, for example, or to make fire. Fire was a technology. Language was a technology. Books were a technology. Throughout our history, we've been, have gone through a progression of engagements with various technologies. Now, of course, today we talk about modern digital technologies, but that's just the latest set of technologies. And we focus on that in a particular separate subject called digital technologies. But design and technology is more about the whole arch of technologies throughout human history. And that includes indigenous technologies and technologies from other cultures throughout history. So that is an aspect of learning about technologies, how they impact upon how we interrelate with one another and essentially how they affect us in society. Two elements of that we focus in on, materials and the technologies related to those materials, such as wood and how we can join wood together. We might use glue to join wood together. We might use nails. We can join wood together to make something. It might be a cabinet. It might be a boat. It might be a kite. There are various um, aspects of materials that have properties that relate to those materials, and the students will be learning about those as part of design and technology. They'll also learn about a range of tools and so forth. But remember, the subject is not about learning about the materials. It's not about learning about the tools. It's about learning how to solve problems by utilizing those tools and their understanding of the materials. Now, the other key aspect is around food and fiber production, where students will learn how to make various items of food, make various items of clothing, understand where fibers come from, where foods come from, and all of the different processes involved in that. And finally, there's the aspect of design. It's not just about learning about these things in theory. It's about learning about how students can come up with their own new designs for solutions. So their own new design for a kite, or their own design for a cabinet or a cake. So it's not about you giving them a recipe or a set of instructions and them following those instructions. Now, yes, you may sometimes do that in order to teach them about the materials or about how to use a particular set of tools, but that's not really design and technology because it doesn't include design. Design and technology is about students designing their own solutions. Now, that's a hard thing for some teachers to get their heads around where you just want to give them an activity and see how they work through and do the activity as you expect them to do it. That doesn't allow them any creativity. The whole point of design technologies education is to allow students to be creative and explore how they are going to create a solution to a problem. And ideally, as we progress through the course, we'll see that they will actually identify the problem that they then come up with a solution to solve. Now that's a progression. The earliest, youngest students don't do that. They eventually should be aiming to do that by the end of primary school though. Okay, so that's around design and technologies. There's a range of other key elements associated with this, um, investigating and defining, generating and designing, producing and implementing, and evaluating and testing. Now these reflect the design process. Technologies education is one of the few subject areas where we actually have built in a pedagogy which is project-based learning. Yes, you can teach it theoretically, and yes, you can teach it in an instructivist way where students just um, listen to you, tell them something, and then follow through and follow your instructions and do that. But you won't really be able to achieve the processes and production aspect of the course without allowing students to go through the design process, investigating the, the problem, defining what it is they need to solve, generating a whole range of possible solutions, not just one solution, 
going through a process of deciding which of those possible solutions is going to be the best one to solve their problem, then implementing that solution, and then testing and evaluating how effectively it solves that problem. And then ideally, what students should then do is go through an iterative process of repeating that whole process and improving upon their design, just as we do with the drafting process in writing. Now, unfortunately, it's one of the problems with technology education is that that rarely happens. It's built into the curriculum. The whole subject is designed around doing this, but because we're so busy in the curriculum, the curriculum is so full, many teachers just gloss over the, the fact that we should be cycling through the design process at least twice, if not three or four times. Students will learn far more by having an opportunity to in, iterate and improve upon their design, just as they do in their writing. And again, we'll talk about more about that as we go through the course. So they are the elements of design and technologies. A key aspect is around preparing students for the future, not just for the current technologies that they need to learn about, but new technologies that will emerge into the future. Now, yes, we're going to be focusing on digital technologies, but even in other non-digital technologies, we're constantly having improvements. If you've ever been to a farm um, today, it's full of technology from automated um, plowing machines to harvesting machines to machines that will go through and identify weeds to uh, machines that go through and spray insecticides. Um, huge amounts of technology go into farming environments. Same happening in the mining sphere, in manufacturing areas. And so wherever students are going to be involved in the production and manufacturing and making of things, there will be a whole range of technologies that will be involved in that. And these will be new. Some of them will, of course, involve digital, but not necessarily as their main focus. We will, of course, be trying to instill those design thinking skills that we're going to be exploring about how to be an effective designer and to think as a designer. We'll be fostering creativity and innovation so that students learn to be innovative and, and come up with their own creative solutions to problems. They'll learn about various technology systems and they'll learn about the sustainability of technology and the systems involved. How, yes, if we're making things out of wood, that is going to involve harvesting trees. But can we do that in a sustainable way? Can we do it in a way that we can replant those trees so that it doesn't have a long-term impact upon the environment? And there are ways that we can explore sustainability and ethical considerations around our decisions to do with technologies. And as with all subjects, we'll also have an opportunity to talk about and develop their digital literacy how to use technology to assist them in doing these things, such as designing something using a computer-aided design package to design their kite, or taking photographs of their design and the processes that they work through as they make their designs. So using ICTs, using information and communication technologies as part of their learning process, as they would in mathematics or in English or geography or any other subject area. So it's different to digital technologies as a subject, it's digital literacy as part of their learning in any subject area. And then finally, there's the aspect of collaboration and communication. Students learning how to work in teams and groups, have leaders and followers, planning out the processes around solving projects, negotiating and working through conflicts and issues, and all of those aspects that are involved in the group elements of design and technologies education. So, some activities that you are to do this week. First is, you need to go and read the curriculum documents. So unpack them, read through them, and there is a quiz for you to do that will um, encourage you to go and look at these various documents in detail. But don't just stop at the quiz elements. Read the documents. It's going to be so important as you engage with this course. Okay, so that's design and technologies. 
And the next we're going to look at digital technology.